Okay, recording. Okay, everybody, welcome to week two. Week two focuses on a more commercial haircut, the long shag. But if you break the long shag down into its roots, it comes from a very classic cut in the 70s called a round layer. So then one of the main focuses of this week is looking at how you do a round layer, how you place bangs, how you face frame with slicing, and how you texturize. So we're going to go through the haircut step by step. Let's make a little start on that. Okay. So the first thing we need to go through is when you when you've got your client sat there, you're making decisions on like how to map it out. How do you decide on where these sections go? So firstly, what are the sections? Let me just get them a little bit closer. Okay, so how we've mapped the hair out is we've got three main zones. Okay, so you have the area at the front, which is for the bangs, the area that you see here, which is your layers. So this is all about uh, the impact your layers will have, and then you have the perimeter. Now, let's break this down so that you understand it and that you can do this on your clients when you haven't got the tutorial in front of you. The first thing you have to consider with the bangs is the position. We have a choice of how far back we go and we have a choice of how far across we go. So how deep you go on your on your profile section or the parting, okay, that controls the density of the fringe. So that controls the amount of hair that comes down into the bangs for you. Okay? So this is influenced by the amount of hair the client has. So the client has really thick hair, for an example, we would probably need not as much hair as demonstrated here. If the hair was really fine, you might have this amount of section. Because if the hair is fine and you have a very small amount of hair or density, there's not going to be much, much definition to the fringe. Okay, so the deeper you go is for fine hair, the more shallow, the thicker hair. Now how far across you go is about the features of the client or the face shape. Okay, so when you look at your client through the mirror, there are three things you want to emphasize. It's the eyes, the lips, and the cheekbones. Okay? Now we broaden this into face shapes. What we mean by that is if you're working with a face shape that has, let's say, a rectangular face shape that has more length, if it's more rounded, it has more width. And we can use the sectioning here to help that because if the section is really really narrow you see here you, you see less of the face it frames the face that adds length if you widen it that adds width so if someone has a face shape like a rectangular face shape where it has a lot of length I would counterbalance that with a wider section if someone has a round face shape which is has more width I would have a more narrow section okay now the reason that the section is curved like this, you'll notice it goes from a low high to a low point. This is kind of how the shape is going to be. What do you mean? It's going to be short at the front and it's going to be longer at the back. That's the characteristic of, characteristics of working round. The shape is shorter at the front and it's longer at the back. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be working by, by lifting the section up, the shortest point will be here and all of the subsequent sections will be over directed to this point. Okay? This will fall like a face frame. Now the reason it's disconnected from here, okay, the reason we have all this hair out the way is that we want to retain the density of the perimeter. Think about your clients in the salon. They tend to want something different maybe with longer, longer hair clients but they probably don't want the hair to feel too thin or they don't want the, the, the length to be gone from the front. So if you are blending in this section here, pulling it up and layering it, you're going to be reducing the density around an area that already has less hair. So our objective with this is like a safety net. This makes sure that we don't lose the density of the client's perimeter. Now the size of the sections directly goes to the impact you want from the layer. So if you want these layers, to be less impactful than what I'm going to do, you make this smaller. 
you make the section smaller. If you want it to be more Miley Cyrus than Kate Middleton, you can make these much bigger. Okay, so you see the point here is that all of these sections can be manipulated to suit an individual person. We don't have to follow it um, like it's a schematic. It is a guide. This is why we've isolated it. The bangs, the layers, the length, okay? So we're gonna start with the actual bangs today. That's the first thing that we're going to do. So, I mean, that seems quite strange straight away. Like, wouldn't you start with the perimeter? Well, actually, in truth, if, if, if I was just going to tidy up the perimeter or something, then yes, I would probably start there first. But I always felt that the fringe was something that I did at the end of the haircut, and I probably did it quite fast. You know, I probably didn't spend masses of time on the fringe, and yet it's a very personal part of the haircut, isn't it? So what I do is I do it first. I find it puts the clients at ease, it puts everything at ease, makes everyone feel more relaxed, you and the actual client, because it's working, it looks good. So we sort of take just below half of the section. This is gonna act as our guideline for the actual bangs. I'll take the next section down the other side. Let's make sure we get it balanced. This is a little thinner on this side at the moment until I rectified it. If we just take the two sections down and point cut them, you've just got two pieces of hair that fall equally on each side. We want more shape than that, really. You know, we want it to have a lot more shape to it, where it looks like its own hair cut. So you take a small section from this side. Okay, you take another small section from the other side, leaving you like a little triangle in the middle. You see that? Okay. Just make it a little more equal. Slightly off there. So this is going to be the first section we cut. And once it's cut, we'll be able to part it down the middle, giving us a guideline for either side of the bangs. Now the first thing you have to consider is that we're going to be using some tension on this. So you have to assess the hairline. You have to assess the density of the hairline. Some people tend to have a slightly lower density around the hairline than the rest of the hair, for example. So this obviously can affect the use of tension. Like when I hold the hair like this and pull it, when I release it, the roots lifted. You see that if I hold it lower down, so the roots lift. Now, that means that when you, if it's this long and it lifts, imagine how much it's going to, how much more it would jump if we cut loads of length off. So you have to add length on is the point I'm making. If you want it to sit here when it's dry, right, you've got to add on probably an inch and a half to the length because not only will it jump a little, but you dry it full at the root, you create a bend in it. You know, it's not, it's very rarely dried flat as a pancake. So add the length on. The next thing is that we're going to be slicing this today. So we'll be using a method of slicing using the V of the scissor. That's the sharpest point of your scissor, the V. So I'm going to be slicing with this, holding the hair tight, slicing like so. Because if I was to cut it blunt, let's say, even if I point cut it, instead of just putting it straight across, the second you let it go, each side has like a, a very obvious blunt feel. And it's incredibly difficult to get rid of that. We also want the contrast or the texture, sorry. We want the texture of this fringe to match the texture of the, of the length. And in most scenarios, people won't be having a lot of length taken off for this haircut. And the edges of the hair are probably quite tapered. So we need to give that, tech, that actual feel to this. So we'll come through. Okay, so you see... You part that and you've got two pieces of hair each side and it's actually you see how easy it is to kind of manipulate the feel of those edges you see that it's very easy indeed to manipulate them because it's been texturized because it's been sliced if we just cut that blunt it'd be very difficult to get that the next thing we do is we take section two which is parallel 
to the first diagonal section we took. So that is parallel to 1. Now, 1 is the guide. This section here we're not going to be using yet. Your 1 won't move. 2 has to over direct to 1. Okay? So 2 over directs to 1. 3 over directs to 2. 4 goes to 3. So what you're not going to do is 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. We're not going to do that because that's working triangular. The increase in length would be too rapid. You want a slower increase in length. So I take my section, I over direct it, like so, I can see my guide and I begin to slice. If, I don't like, if you don't like slicing, you can use a razor. So that's, I mean, a razor works very, very well. If you point cut the hair, that's also possible. There's no reason why you can't point cut. Just be aware that it probably will still be fairly blunt. Now I've got three here and I've got two here. So I connect those as well. Okay. I've got three and I've got four. Now, even before we, we do anything there, we can kind of see what we've got. You've got a section that curves around the cheekbone and sits like a cur like the curtain bangs. So when you've completed that, I would want you to pull it down and just check it. Just make sure it is okay and it is neat. Once you've completed that, let the section, I sometimes present it to a client like this, where I'll pop it over my comb like so, and show the client with a little flick to it, so that the client feels more relaxed, because essentially, it is their hair. So now on this side, I have my guide, okay, I take section two, and I've got section one, I take three and two, so I don't use one for three. Four goes to three. Again, you check it. I mean, sometimes when I do this, it may be where it doesn't look overly neat. So uh, it won't look overly neat, so I want to just check it. That's sitting rather nice at the moment. Okay, so that's kind of the start of your curtain bangs. The objective is that we take a small V section, which gives me a little bit of each side as the guide. We have a direct to the previous, not to the middle. This gives a slower increase in length, and we slice so that the edges are jagged. Now, what if it was a side parting? Well, it wouldn't be able to be exactly like a set of bangs it would have to be more of a side parting with the same flick okay so it is totally different how you do it but for this purposes we've worked central which generally speaking is how most of these are done so you'd be drying this fuller here you create the bend through there and it's sort of very jennifer lopez yeah you've got that nice shape to it now what are we going to do with all this because suddenly we forgot about in, in the happiness of seeing those bangs look good, we've suddenly realised there's loads more hair to cut. And there is. We're going to separate these into two again, so we're not going to work with them as one big chunk of section. We do want to have a finer amount of hair. So you've got these two pieces falling down. Now, what we're looking to do here is, we're looking to elevate the guideline. So instead of the guideline being kept low like here, and connecting section two onto that, which would actually make this look quite thick. So if the client has very fine hair, you want the elevation to be lower. Okay, if it's lower, it's going to be thicker. If it's higher, that's more for hair where it needs the softness. Now, we've covered elevation. We know that we're gonna elevate so that we get a shape that is very softy and, uh, soft and shaggy okay but over direction is important because if you over direct it this way you will find a guide but it'll be incorrect and you'll start to go too short if you pull it in here you'll have a lot more weight in this section than you probably need so you're looking to pull it directly out straight out okay a 
again a razor works fine you can point cut this you could have grabbed this section like this and point cut it you know that's fine it all works well and if somebody came in after let's say eight weeks and they said I just need my bangs trimming you couldn't slice it because there's not enough hair to come off so you would have to point cut okay I think that texturizing is a lot like bleaching you don't overlap it yeah now I've stood from the back here yeah I've stood from the back whilst I'm cutting this side here it's because we are cutting this short into long okay so if I stood at the front and tried to cut this section here I pulled it up my scissors are working long into short whereas over here I was short into long so on one side you need to stand from the back when you're doing it and the other side you stand from the front okay so that's that that would be the same when we come to the slicing as well So it's starting to take shape really. The final sections come in and I still separate them because it's, remember the shortest point of this is at the parting. So I don't put it too high, yeah? If you put it too high, I mean really you'll start to see shorter pieces this the whole idea is that I want this to look like it was cut six weeks ago okay I want it to look like it's some people used to say my hair's always better a couple of weeks after it's been cut and I always felt that was because it settles and it kind of naturally tapers a little how do I know which elevation to take well I suppose what you've got to look for is that if you go imagine it's like an accelerator pedal yeah the lower the thicker this is going to look the higher, the shorter. So it's up to you. I don't. I never go too high with this. Okay. I tend to just work a little bit higher each time. So I'm kind of using my monitor here as a as a mirror. Yeah, that's looking nice. What do you think, Sarah? Looking good so far. Right. So you've got your bangs in, and that's really like a third of the haircut, isn't it? Isn't this fast? This is such a great haircut for the salon floor, you see. So that's the first piece of hair we've cut. Now the next bit is we're going to look at the layers. So when you take your section for the layers, the first thing is people always seem to take the section parallel to the mapping section. Because we've mapped it forward diagonal, don't make the mistake that you're going to cut for diagonal. We're actually going to section diagonal back. I sectioned this off about an hour ago, so it seems to be drying off rather fast. So I'll take a diagonal back section, okay, because that's the direction we want the length to increase in. Okay, so we want the length to increase traveling backwards. Now we're going to get the other side in straight away because so we've got to get our balance right. Okay, so we're going to do this side too. Now you could use the fringe as a guideline. You see how short that is? You could use that as a guide if you wanted to. We are we well, I probably won't use it as a guide, but you could. Um, what we're going to do is to create another guide, something that I think is more palatable for the, for our clientele. Okay. So you've got both sides, at this point you have both sides where the sectioned and zoned out. So you've got the side, I suppose like a headband section I suppose, sitting across here. Now what we do here is we're going to take the section as groom it forward. Now we're going to take a small amount of hair from each side, exactly what we did when we did the, the bangs. 
We'll take a smaller piece of hair from one side, a small piece of hair from the other, and this is going to constitute as our guide. So when we pull this down, we assess where you want it to go. Do you want the, do you want the layers to be really long? Do you want them to be shorter? We're going to go a little bit shorter. So we're going to cut them around the chin and I begin to slice. And the reason I always slice, you notice I did this last week with the forward graduation, is because it makes it more transparent and makes it blend more. Okay. So you take your section, like so, and you, again, we're pulling it straight forward. If you over direct it this way, okay, it's gonna go too short. Okay, so that's a big one, it's your danger zone. Okay, so anything over here is danger. Okay, over here, that's fine, it's just gonna be too long. But pulling it straight up, there's my guide here. So that is my guideline there, like you see. Now I'm gonna lift this up like so, okay. I'm going to try and probably get a better angle on this to show you, but I'll be pulling this up and slicing short to long, short to long, short to long. So because we've got the long, the slicing allows me to go from short to really long quite rapidly. And this, this mannequin head is 22 inches long, okay, so it's, it's like, not like a typical mannequin head yet, it's long. So this is good for this tutorial because I've, you've really got to get it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the camera a bit more so you can really see. So I take the section. Elevation wise, I'm really quite far forward. If you go too low, the increase in length is more rapid. Higher, you slow the increase in length. So I tend to just pull it straight forward. Then as I go through, I go like this lot. Slice, one, move up, and move up. So you're creating this scooping motion. Don't you mess up my section. Scooping motion, scooping motion, okay? Now, not only does that fall very transparent and very soft because you've sliced it, but also it falls like a face frame. The actual shape of it, as it falls, let's give it a, a little bit of a strengthen up, it falls like a face frame. So we're disconnecting the layers from the length so that the length isn't overly thinned out. Okay, that's the reason we're doing that. We don't want to go too short necessarily because half the time, you know, commercial clients don't really want really, really short layers in their hair, yeah? But the concave aspect gives, when it curves away like this, it's incredibly blended. Even if it's disconnected, Okay, sorry about that everybody. So yeah, now I'm stood from the front. So I'm stood from the front just for a moment, just so that as I'm cutting this section here, it's still short to long. So the same thing as when I did the fringe, okay? Remember the fringe? I had to move around. Okay. So I pull my section up. No other direction forward, remember? and a slice, short to long, okay? Now remember, short to long is really important because that's what's gonna give you the real nice softness towards the perimeter, but it's gonna keep the weight in the length. So I'll take my section, same as on the other side, just strengthen it up a little bit. And again, how that falls is it falls like a face frame, okay? That's the objective. Both sides fall like a face frame. You see that? And that's what we're looking for. now. All of our sections, section two, three, four, four, however many it takes to complete this, are all over directed to the very front of the section. Okay? So they're over directed to the very, very front. That's our objective. Let's keep the sections damp. If you I mean, in fairness, you don't always have to dampen it down. I think sometimes if you're working with like ultra thick hair, it actually sometimes is quite good to allow the hair to dry a little to assess how it's going to lift and move. I think when it's quite short, I think keeping the hair damp is all about the control of the section, you know? 
So see how I'm over directing this all forward like so. Again, slice it through. So let's turn it back around this way now so you can see not only the over direction, but you can see the cut line. Again, Ben, what if I don't like slicing? You can absolutely razor it. You can point cut it. I've just found slicing to be the most effective method because it, it allows me to really go from short to long and I can really taper the technique off. I don't have to be too dramatic with it. I find a razor is quite an impactful tool, you know? Works though. So again, I'm just gonna check this over. Just double check it, slice through. And again, what we've got is a line that is falling short to long, short to long, short to long. So that's falling basically the same way the face frame will. You've got loads of nice short layers in here, but it's falling like a face frame. So it works really well. Okay, go to the other side. And this side, this time I'm stood from the front of the of my model. So if you're right-handed, when you cut your left-hand side, you'll be stood at the front. And when you cut the right-hand side, you'll be stood at the back. Okay, I'm going to over-direct this all forward. So it's coming all the way to the very first section again. And if you watch, like watch my scissors here, look, I'm going to scoop in, scoop in, and scoop in. It gives it kind of a very jagged feel to the layers and I feel it works incredibly well for a clientele okay but well why does it work really well well I feel you kind of get that feeling of I want layers but I don't want layers you know it's not overly committed for the client they're quite transparent in the hair and if you cut it blunt it's going to fall heavier, isn't it? You're going to see that more as it falls to natural fall. Okay, so again, I'll just put it down, just check it. Sometimes you need to just strengthen it out a little bit. Just check your balance. Make sure that you're okay. So when you when I say check your balance, pull both sections out from the middle back round and just check them as they fall. Make sure they're falling okay. I've got a little bit on this side. So I'd go back over and then because it's only a small amount of hair, I would point cut. Yeah, so when it's a small amount of hair, you'd point cut. If you're cutting off loads and loads of hair, the client's hair will be so blunt when you take off the excess. You know, you've had a client where you're taking off, let's say, a couple of inches off the length. They might say to you, I don't want a blunt line on the length, you know, because they're used to it being really soft and feathered. So you see we've got this, how the layer falls. Yes, it's disconnected, but it's connecting because of the fact that it's basically a face frame. You release all of the, all the length of the client's hair, okay? Like so. Now, when you've released all that hair, the frustrating thing is, you all of a sudden seem to look like you've got no layers anymore. You're just all bangs and length. So we've got to re-establish the, the face framing, you know? We've got no face framing here. So I'd want you to go from the crown to just behind the ear, no further. Because if you go too far, you start to make the length look like a V at the back, okay? And when you slice this, if the section is allowed to stay directly down to natural fall, you risk taking off too much hair, okay? So you want to be swinging this forward, which helps to make sure that you don't take off too much hair. You don't lose too much length.
So as I go through, I size, and look what my right hand's doing. It's moving, yeah? It's helping me. It's pulling the hair out of the path of the scissors, yeah? So I let that fall. And I think to myself, I'd like a little bit more around the face. So I pull it down again and go back through. Yeah? Now, you take your last section, going further back, and now you don't swing it forward, you just pull it straight down, use that guide, and connect in. Okay? So all you're doing there is, we are hoping to connect in the face framing, okay, the, um, the bangs, the face framing, and the length all in. So this is the final part of the haircut, where your objective is to connect in the bangs you've cut, which kind of connect into the front layers, the layers into the perimeter. But nothing really knits together, because if it did, there'd be a compromise on how short you could go with the bangs, to how short the layers could be, to how much length you lost. So this is, a, for me, my favorite way of doing a shag cut, because I feel it has the client in mind. Okay, I feel it has a sort of expensive feel to it, you know? So now when I pull this down here, I stand on the opposite side. If I stand on this side, as I try to swing round, my hand isn't good, I can't really move. So if I go over here, I'm able to really pivot round and move. So as I pull the section, Now there's my guideline. My guideline is the actual layer. Okay, so when you swing it forward, you find your guide. And as I come round, like so. Okay, so I'm coming round. My scissor is moving. I'm moving my thumb very, very slightly so it glides easier. I'm lifting it because you pull away from what you want to keep. So I want to keep the length around here and um, the thickness at the base. I go over it like the other side, I put it down, just want it a bit stronger, so I go in, okay, and then I take a section from here, but now we, di we didn't over direct this forward, we just pulled it straight down like so, and just connected it in, okay, and that gives you this, this effect of it going like so. So the key things to consider here are that, you cannot, if your scissors are pointing into the length, you'll lose length. So you want to be pulling away, yeah? Pull away from where you want the length with your scissor. So if you're slicing this, and you're slicing it like that, you're going to, you're going to cut a lot of length off. If you're slicing like this and move away, and lift the hair, you're going to get a much better expanded line. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit off the length, because it's quite wispy, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, she needs a few tapes in there, doesn't she, to thicken that out. But we're just going to go through. She's a trip to three degrees in Galway there. Get her, get her some nice, so uh, let's sort her out. I'm going to pull this down. I'm just going to take off the wispiness at the bottom, yeah? To strengthen it up a little bit. Would, why couldn't you just done that when the hair was, uh, you know, before you started? Well, I suppose sometimes you don't know how wispy the hair is until you start to strengthen up the front or you start to, you know, put bangs in and things. So quite often it's just nice to get the hair cut in a, in a position where you're able to sort of assess that. Okay. So you see we've got our layers in. Yeah, the round layer is in, the shag layers are in, the face framing is in, the bangs are in. So what's next? Blow drying. We need to dry the hair off, okay? And when we've dried it, we're going to come back to it and check it and go through it, okay?
So I always like to use these little clips. You might see it occasionally on my work. And the reason is, you know why the hair is still warm? Uh, obviously, you know, the keratin, <coughs> excuse me, the keratin is setting, isn't it? So just to give it a little helping hand, I kind of clip the hair how I want it to sit, you know? So it's like, it's gonna make my life a lot easier and yours, you know, just put a little clip in, hold the hair nice. Just get some of this hair out of the way.
Oh my goodness, it's got hot oil all of a sudden then. Products of the hair looks so good, huh? That's the terrible joke out of the way. Right, here we go. So again, I just want to clip bits where I want them to be. So as they cool off, you get like a really nice, uh, a bit of a lending hand really. And all you're doing is just... The, all the heat you've used, just as it cools, you're just letting it sit in the way we want. Oh, it's working well. Okay, so we've got the hair dry, and we put a slight bend in it as well, just for the, I think it looks nice, especially for a demonstration on a mannequin, it's really quite nice. I'm going to give it a little light comb through. Again, a big apology to everybody uh, for the fact that we, not only did we move the day, and then, you know, a few hours beforehand, we'd moved the time. So, it won't be happening again, and I really appreciate all your patience, and I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. Uh, when you get it dry, quite often I think it's nice to just go back in to the fringe. So, I go in with channel cutting, very gently, move my thumb, you see how my thumb is moving? This will deflate it. This will create more definition around here. Now, before you approach removing any more length, okay, so if you decide that you want to go a little bit shorter in here, do not cut the length off first. Remove the weight first because, in all honesty, you take it shorter, it will still look, it still won't look how you want. And you'll think it's the length and you keep going at it. And it's not. The majority of the time, it's the weight. Okay, so take the weight out first and assess it. I start from the very centre panel and then I go into the rest. Come through with some just some point cutting, okay? To shatter it through. So when I've got sexual this, I go in and I point cut so that I'm working short to long. It's quite aggressive, but it's a way of me really getting my shattered feel out the front. Okay. Do you see that? You don't see any steps or anything from that, you don't see any disconnection. It's a very nice shape. Which, well, you're going to say that, Ben. <laughs> so, take the next section. And again, I'll go through deep point cut, double tap technique. A little bit of a channel cut. So then I would get my hairspray and just start to create my bend where I want it, you know. So instead of, I actually prefer a little hairspray in, instead of like dry shampoos and serums and things. I feel they brush out nice and they don't really leave a residue on the hair. But this is what I wanted to show you on week two. It's how we create really short layers. See that length there? Really short layers and how we blend it into the length. We use practical disconnection. That means you don't see the disconnection, okay? Looking good. So again, I do apologize. I appreciate we've got no one actually currently watching it, so there's no questions. But if you have questions about this afterwards, please feel free to like message me. Uh, we're going to be adding uh, a bit more content to help this haircut as well, like we did with the previous shape. We added some additional um, additional content to it. But yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Um, again, thank you so much for being part of this Core 12. And let me know if, how you get on with this shape.